Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn the heat on, nigga. I need weed. I'll be near and it won't be long. Turn which I like to call cannabis conspiracy theories. Tonight's theory revolves around the first Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, a holiday so stuffed with tradition that it feels like a family-sized joint of gratitude rolled tight and smoked slow. But have you ever wondered if the history behind it is as hazy as a hot box after dinner? What if the original feast wasn't about turkey, gratitude, or awkward small talk with relatives? What if it was about cannabis? A cannabis-infused cornbread so potent it left everyone higher than Plymouth Rock. Strap on your buckle hats, pack your metaphorical bows, and get ready for a deep dive into the most lit historical words. Words, people. Historical conspiracy of all time. This isn't your grandma's Thanksgiving tale. It's a mind-blowing reefer recap of how the first Thanksgiving really went down, complete with the buffet of cannabis puns, food innuendos, and riddles to snack on. We've been fed the same dry history for centuries. The pilgrims, fresh off the Mayflower and drier than an overcooked turkey, struggled through their first winter. But then, thanks to the generosity of the Native Americans, they had a bountiful harvest and celebrated with a grand feast. But let's take a hit of truth for a second. How did they go from starving to throwing the chillest party of the century? The answer lies in what historians have ignored for years. The peace pipe plant. A gift from the Native Americans that wasn't just meant for puffing, it was meant for puff pastry. They shared not only corn, but also their knowledge of cannabis, claiming it was the herb of harmony. The pilgrims, ever resourceful and hungry, Far more than just the pilgrims, ever resourceful and hungry for more than just freedom, decided to bake it into cornbread. The result was a loaf so good it didn't just rise, it elevated the entire feast. The pilgrims weren't just full, they were fulfilled. Forget turkey, the cornbread was the real MVP. With flavors so bold, they practically blazed a new culinary path. Here's a riddle for you. I'm plucked from the field, shucked with flair. My kernels are tasty and I'm beyond compare. Whether popped, creamed, or buttered with pride, what am I that's always on Thanksgiving side? Picture the scene. Pilgrims and Native Americans seated around a massive table, passing bowls of mashed potatoes and joints of goodwill. Instead of arguing about politics, they were giggling about how silly uh, people. I'm gonna stop talking to y'all. Originated, originated. Uh, I'm gonna stop talking. Originated at this very meal. The turkeys who've been sweating feathers, thinking they were the main course, breathed a sigh of relief. For once, they were safe from the chopping block. The pilgrims were too distracted by their herbal enlightenment to bother with dry poultry. Instead, they feasted on cornbread so dank it could have been a strain itself. Pilgrim's Pride OG. This was no ordinary meal. It was a joint effort. A culinary truce baked with love, laughter, and a sprinkle of herbal harmony. The feast wasn't just about survival. It was about thriving, vibing, and munching their way to a new tradition. Here's another riddle. I'm golden and warm, baked with care. A crust on top. Spices in the air or apple. I'm always a delight. What am I that steals the dessert spotlight? Historians will tell you the feast lasted three days because the harvest was abundant. But let's be real, it was the munchies. After a few slices of that dank cornbread, the pilgrims couldn't stop eating. Every dish hit like a culinary cush. Even the stuffing, which was originally made with Whatever stale bread they had lying around suddenly tasted like a Michelin star creation. Imagine the conversation. These mashed potatoes are fire. What's in them? Butter, bruh. Just butter? Nah, like magic butter. Nah, just regular butter, bruh. Still amazing, bruh. And the desserts? Forget the humble pie we know today. Back then, it was pumpkin pie with the twists. The cannabis cornbread had inspired a dessert revolution. Leading a pie so decadent, they left everyone saying, I'm never leaving this table. Or this plane of existence. Riddle time. I'm mashed, smashed, and buttery too. You can add gravy. 
I'll still please you. Soft and creamy. I'm everyone's fave. What am I that makes the kids behave? Now here's where the story takes a darker turn. After the feast, the pilgrims were hooked. Not just on good vibes, but on the idea of making Thanksgiving an annual tradition. But when they pitched the idea to the king of England, he was not amused. The king declared that such a meal would make his subjects too mellow to pay taxes. In an act of royal pettiness, the king erased the cannabis cornbread from history and replaced it with turkey. A bird so dry it practically requires its own irrigation system of gravy. And thus, the Thanksgiving we know was rebranded to Thanksgiving, complete with all the carb loading, but none of the herb-induced harmony. Here's another riddle. I'm filled with stuffing, roasted or fried. On Thanksgiving, I'm the star of the ride. I gobble, but can't sing. I got wings, but don't fly. What am I who never gets to say goodbye? As time went on, the cannabis cornbread legend faded into obscurity, buried beneath layers of cranberry sauce and decades of family debates over who gets the wishbone? But every now and then, whispers of the true first Thanksgiving resurface like a hidden nostalgia in a haze of tradition. If you ever feel like your Thanksgiving is missing something, consider this. Maybe it's not about gratitude. Maybe it's about recreating the vibe of the first feast. A vibe that was more chilled in a November evening and more lit than the bonfires they sat around. So grab a plate, pass the stuff in, and remember, Thanksgiving is just a poorly rebranded Thanksgiving. The answers to the riddles, mashed potatoes, a turkey. I'll see y'all on the next one, bruh.